be in kindergarten when I was four. Since my birthday is in November, this meant that I was at least a year younger than everyone in my class. When I started junior high, suddenly something was different. I noticed my friends changing. <laughs> they got curvy legs and full hips and sprouted boobs. I was 10 going on 11, a scrawny stick figure of a kid. I had size 10 feet to trip over, but I was four foot 10 and awkward. I was jealous of my friends' bodies, and I would sneak looks at their chests, their butts, their legs, trying not to get caught. Still, I figured I would catch up soon. But a year and a half passed, and nothing happened. I mean, nothing. There was only one other girl in my grade who was as flat as I was, my friend Julie, and eventually she and I agreed on one thing. If we didn't get boobs, stat, we were over. So we started stuffing our bras with anything we could find. Toilet paper, shoulder pads, padding we stole out of Walmart swimsuits. This went on for months, Julie and I constantly conferring about whether or not anything was growing. Nothing ever was. Then one day in Teen Magazine, I saw it. An ad for Curves. Curves were advertised as lifelike silicone breast enhancements to be placed in the bra to give your breasts an extra boost. Since we had nothing to speak of, they were an answer to our prayers. Fake boobs. They would bounce like real ones and even feel real, right down to the nipples. <laughs> they were $40. We had to either ask our parents to put it on a credit card or obtain money orders. We thought about it for a minute until Julie piped in with, um, I'd rather die than tell my parents. I agreed. We figured out how to get money out of orders. It took us a couple weeks of babysitting, but we each saved up the 40, plus shipping and handling, and sent away for our curves. Six anxiety-filled weeks later, they arrived. I grabbed the package, hoping no family member had seen it. I tore in and discovered that my new falsies were perfect. I tried them on with every shirt. I jumped up and down in them, and they jiggled just right. I called my friend. Julie, I said, our problem is solved. The next day, I went to school proud. For the first time, I wore a slim-fitting tank top instead of my normal baggy t-shirt. I knew that boys were looking at me differently. I looked great, and I was overcome by a heady feeling of social success. I quickly discovered that there were a few caveats to my new breasts. For one thing, the silicone was cased in a thin plasticky layer that would make the skin underneath them sweat, and often I was so clammy that the curves would stick to me. A little uncomfortable, but a small price to pay for the perfect body. Also, I began to live in fear of one of my secrets falling out. I worried about gym class, and swimming, and running. I sewed pockets for my curves into my swimsuits and developed a highly advanced locker room system for changing from a regular bra into a sports bra. My enhancements became all I could think about. So life went on like this. While Julie finally developed a little, I was convinced I was a medical freak. What if my boobs just never came in? What if I had to carry on this charade forever? By this time, my curves are starting to disintegrate from constant use. <laughs> the seams pulled apart to reveal a substance that looked like fleshy styrofoam made of congealed jelly. I patched them with duct tape. <laughs> they also smelled like armpit from years of soaking up sweat. <laughs> and the stench hung on, although I washed them with dial. <laughs> Sophomore year arrived, and I got my first real boyfriend. Brad Torrance. He was two years older and had a pager. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like a silent partner in a weed dealing business, so I like need a pager. Yes. We ended up dating because he was the first high school boy to ever ask me out. A week or two into our relationship, I realized that with my big secret, makeout sessions in his parents' dark basement were going to be stressful. 
It became a new martial art form. <laughs> I learned to block him from feeling me up in so many creative ways that I could have taught a class on avoiding second base. He would try to put his hands up my shirt in front and I would lean in close to hug him while he kissed. He would make an attempt to go up the side and I would pull my biceps in for another successful block. Although he was visibly frustrated and my heart was always thumping in fear, we pretended like nothing strange was going on. One weekend, Brad decided he was going to throw a big party at the Ramada. I lied to my mom that I'd be staying at Julie's house and drove straight out to the hotel. There were already a couple dozen people there drinking and hanging out. I didn't know many of them. They were the type of kids that smoked weed at lunch and had to repeat sophomore geography. I, would <laughs> I was the type of kid who read books, wore v-neck Abercrombie and Fitch sweaters, <laughs> and curled my hair with hot rollers. Brad greeted me with a side hug. Hey, what's up, girl? Ready to get messed up? Before I could reply, someone walked in and commanded his attention. The jerk ditched me. I wanted to look cool. I decided to start drinking. I saw a big pitcher of vodka and orange juice. I pounded a glass full and thought how great it was. I could barely taste the vodka. I poured another. And another. The rest of the night, I remember in flashes. <laughs> Flash. Police officers breaking and entering into our party. Brad hissing, shut up, be quiet. I must not have obeyed him because before long, I had the cops full attention. They sternly asked for my name and parents' phone number. <laughs> my name is Virgin Mary Blueberry and my number is 1-900-MIX-A-LOT. <laughs> then I burst out laughing. Flash, a policewoman sitting next to me and kindly holding back my hair as I hurled in the toilet. It's okay, honey, she said. Get it out. Tears mixed with my vomit as I realized I was in big trouble. Flash, my parents at the party, poking me back into consciousness. Brad must have betrayed me and told the cops the truth about my identity. Flash, lying in hospital bed with an IV in my arm. I woke up in my own bed with gaps in my memory. I remembered enough to be scared. After a few minutes, I decided to get up and look my mother in the eye. I threw back the covers and saw that I was wearing only shorts and a t-shirt. In slow motion, I reached up to my chest to reassure myself that my curves were in place. <laughs> but no perfect jiggly breast enhancements met my hand. I wasn't even wearing a bra. No. Then I saw it, the bag beside my bed. It had all the clothes I was wearing the previous night. I rustled through it. Oh, God. Only one curve. <laughs> a few things became chillingly clear. One was that people, including my mom, had seen me naked. Two was that if I had been wearing both my fake boobs at the hospital, then they would both be in the bag. <laughs> so the other one had fallen out before I arrived there. It could have been while I was puking, or while my parents carried me to the car, or it could have fallen out at the party in front of a large group of my peers. Perhaps everyone had seen and had barely been able to contain their laughter as I continued my revelry. Perhaps I hadn't even been cognizant of the most humiliating moment of my life. At some point, one of my duct-taped, silicone, imitation breasts simply <laughs> fell out. <laughs> or flew out. <laughs> one final point was clear. The jig was up. My mom, my boyfriend, my whole school, and the Kansas City Police Department knew my shame. I wore fake boobs. In the end, my mom didn't ground me. She said, sweetie, if being rushed to the hospital didn't teach you a lesson, I sure as hell can't. She did, however, gleefully exact psychological revenge. You know, this incident with the police is going on your permanent record. 
She convinced me that the cops might show up on our doorstep any minute, and for years, I wondered if I would go to jail. She also informed me that I'd almost died of alcohol poisoning. Much later, I figured out my parents had taken me to the hospital to get a rehydrating saline drip. <laughs> Monday morning rolled around, and I cowered. Uh, Mom, I begged, I'm really still not feeling well. She coldly forced me to go to school. Terrified, I dressed in a thick wool sweater and a slightly padded bra. A piece of me was missing. What would people say? Would they whisper or laugh out loud? I walked into school waiting to get funny looks or be openly ridiculed, but nothing happened. Was it possible, possible that my reputation was intact? I spoke of it to no one, and no one spoke of it to me. As for Brad, I sacrificed my lunch hour to break up with him. It wasn't working out. I never found out what happened to my other curve. I considered buying a new set, but decided against it. It turned out that it was a relief to lose them. I was in my real body for the first time in years, and no one seemed to notice or care. Besides, living the lie was just too exhausting. Turns out, I wasn't a medical freak. I never got those 36 C's I wanted, but I think I make 34 B look damn sexy. <laughs> Show me that